Hello, hello everyone. Today we're going to be having a lecture on reviewing some components of reading and then targeting instruction in problem areas. First, what are those five components of reading? We have phonemic awareness, phonics, fluency, vocabulary, and comprehension. We also talked in class about tiered instruction, where 80% of your students might be reading at grade level, but then you have about that 20%. 15% of them might just need some small group targeted instruction, versus 5% might need that tier 3 intensive targeted instruction and supports. So how do we address that? That's what we're going to be talking about today, targeting the reading problem. So let's figure out which area do we need to target. If it's phonemic awareness, phonemic awareness is that oral skill that does not involve any visual stimuli. You can actually do it in the dark. It involves syllabication, onset rhyme, basic phoneme identification for initial, medial, and end positions. Advanced phonemic awareness skills involves the ability to manipulate, substitute, and delete individual sounds and blends. So to target this area, you might want to do some assessments. The PAST phonological awareness screening test is a test that we had done in class. Uh, and it might, uh, uh, it's a quick 10 minute test to be able to see if a student struggles with phonemic awareness. If you want to dive deeper, the Dibbles test or the CTOP2 can give you more details about whether a student is struggling with phonemic awareness. How do you know? Well, the problem might be evident if they were not able to com uh, complete blending activities. For example, if you ask them to put the sounds k -i -k together and make a word, they're not able to, to blend them together and make the word kick. Or they're not able to substitute sounds. For example, you ask them to change the m mm in m mate to make k in order to make crate. Uh, they struggle with doing that. Or they have a hard time telling how many syllables are in a word. For example, you might ask them, how many syllables in the word paper? And they're not able to tell you that there's two syllables. So what do you do if you have a phonemic awareness problem? You plan on explicitly, te explicitly teaching phonemic and phonological skills. So let's move on. If it's not a phonemic awareness problem, then you want to find out, is it a phonics pro problem? Research has shown us that direct instruction in the alphabetic principle helps reading acquisition. The Connecticut Longitudinal Study found that decoding is a major factor in comprehension. The ability to decode long words distinguishes poor and good readers. So some of the assessments that you may do to find out if it's a phonics issue is the Wade. This is the one we did in class, the Wilson assessment of decoding and encoding. A formal assessment that can give you, uh, give you um, a little bit more knowledge would be the Woodcock-Johnson 4, specifically the subtest word attack. Um, a quick review about the type of words. There are four different kinds of words in the English language. You have the regular words. All letters represent the sound that it makes. Then you have the irregular word, the words that one or more letters does not represent the common sound. And these are words that uh, we call those red words, where you have to teach them to read by memory. Uh, you have the sight words, um, where a, a student can read, see the word and, and at once read it by sight, their orthographic memory. Mapping is the words are in their ortho orthographic memory. Then you have the high frequency words. Jones had found 13 words in the English language uh, take up about 25% of the, of the print. So these are some words that you want to make sure that students are able to read to memory. So phonics problems can be evident if they have difficulty matching sounds and letters. This affects reading and spelling. And they're having trouble reading phonetically or that you find that they're decoding in a very labored manner. So what do you do? You teach phonics in a systematic, explicit way. 
What does that mean? Well, we talked about that. Uh, the in, in phonics instructional routines involved involves um, doing visual and auditory drills where you have the sound and the letter matching and you review that with your student. You can also blend sounds where you have uh, you separate them into parts and then blend them together to read words. And then after that, you practice so that they can read the word automatically. You also, at the same time, want to involve, uh, teach them to segment and, and encode those, those words and then do dictation. And then you're always having them read decodable text, text that, that they're able to decode, the ones that you've already taught them what those sounds are. Um, we have a phonics lesson plan that we reviewed in class. Here is an example of a Wilson lesson plan outline where you, you explicitly teach instruction in specific sounds where you do the quick drill and you do the blending drill. You have them read words and read sentences and then re read passages that are decodable. So what I would like you to do is, uh, here's an example in this YouTube video of a teacher who planned a lesson and targeted a problem that she identified. In this specific case, the student was struggling with distinguishing Bs and Ds. And the teacher also noticed that the teacher had, the student had a bad habit of not looking at the text. So I want you to go and look at this video and see an example of how a, a teacher targeted that instruction. After that, our next step would be comment. Uh, uh, write down here in this YouTube video, what is your biggest takeaway from this lecture? That way I can give you credit for watching the video and then we will be able to move on to fluency next week. Thank you for listening.